and welcome to Bite Size Science. My name is Jillian and I'm a science educator at the Discovery Centre. Today's activity is all about sound and has a slightly different take on the classic tin can telephone. This experiment will help us compare how sound travels through different materials or mediums. It will look a little silly watching me do the experiment because you won't get to hear exactly what I hear. So I encourage you to have some fun and try this at home. Before we create our experiment, let's talk a bit about sound to help you understand how our experiment works. Sound waves are created by the vibration of particles, and since all matter, solids, liquids, or gases, are made up of particles, this means sound can travel through matter, all matter to some degree. It may seem a little strange to think that every sound you've heard began as a physical movement of something, for example, an object banged into or scraped against something else. And this set off a chain reaction of vibrating particles that eventually reached the receiver, your eardrum, hearing aid, or recording device. When we're talking about sounds, the material that the sound wave is traveling through is called the medium. Most of us are used to hearing sound through the medium of air. But did you know that sound actually travels much better, and by that I mean much faster, through a solid? So I've got a solid here. And I've also got some molecules to show you how they are packed in a solid, a liquid, or gas. The particles in a solid are much tighter packed together than in liquids or gases. This means that that chain reaction of vibrations I talked about earlier happens much quicker in a solid than in the other states of matter. All right. Best materials for transmitting sound waves are actually certain metals like aluminum and very hard substances like diamonds. Today's experiment will help us understand how well sound travels through a solid compared to air. We can experiment with different solids to see how the sound changes. I don't know about you, but I don't have diamonds just laying around, so we'll use some common solid objects, including the bones of our fingers. The first step of today's experiment is to gather your materials. The materials you need today are string, a metal coat hanger or kitchen utensil, and a pair of scissors. I chose a butter knife. I tried this at home as well with a metal coat hanger, a wooden spoon, and a kitchen whisk to see how the sounds would compare. First, securely tie the strings to the metal object you want to test. I'm going to try my butter knife here. Remember, if you are picking a kitchen utensil, make sure you grab something that's not sharp. You don't want to hurt yourself through the process and something that will be easy to securely tie your strings to. I'm going to tie both of my strings near one end for my butter knife here, just so that it's a little easier to swing it and get a nice sound using the thinner part of the knife, the actual cutting part. All right, I've got it all tied. The next step is to wrap that string gently around your index finger or thumb. I'm going to choose my thumb. And now, so that we can test it out, and you can already kind of hear the sounds that my knife is making, we're going to gently swing it so it gets, bangs against a hard surface like a wall or door or table. Just be careful when you do this so you don't damage anything. Now, while you're swinging it against that object, listen to the sound as it travels through the medium of air to reach your hear ears. Let's have a listen. Can you hear that at home? All right, now we'll see how it compares with the solid. Carefully insert the finger or thumb that are wrapped in string gently into your ears without pushing in too far. This is important that you're careful with your ears and make sure what you're doing never hurts. It's important not to push any other objects in your ears as well. I chose my thumbs because they're a bit bigger and they can't go very far into my ear. All right, once you're all set with your finger or thumb in your ears, we're going to again gently swing that object so it bangs against the same hard surface. Now listen to the sound as it travels through the knife, through the string, and through the bones of your fingers, all solid objects, to reach your ears. Let's have a listen. That sounds pretty cool. I can't wait for you to try it at home. When you give it a try, see what you notice. Is the sound any different? Do you hear the sound for the same length of time as you did through the air? Now that you have all the steps you need, it's your turn to try it out at home. Once you experiment with one solid object, try it out with different solids to see which materials transmit sound the best. I hope you had lots of fun exploring sound with your new creation. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jillian from the Discovery Center, and this was Bite Size Science.